it's inoculate calling in to explain there guys the night Good night, honey. Yeah. All right. The message, my message is on uh, Mr. Rock that you're standing on if it's a solid ground. Because a lot of times people um, that are Christian, they say, oh, um, I'm standing in the ro on, on the solid rock. And um, then you ask them to, be, um, to, you know, give the definition, the definition of the solid rock that they're standing on. Some of them say it's Jesus Christ. But then things occur in their life, and all of a sudden, you see them running scared. Um, they fall down, and some of them never get back up. Mm -hmm. Some of them go into deep, deep depression and never recover. Some of them go into deep, deep depression and commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Some of them is running around like they're crazy. They, they, are, they call themselves Christian, and, and then they running around doing stuff that's not pleasing in the eyes of God. So when they stand and they said, I'm standing on the rock of Christ because they, 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 um, they take God's grace and his mercy for a joke. They take God's grace and his mercy for a crutch. They, they, they want to lean on that when there is problems. But when there's no problems, they, they go on. When there's nothing going on in their life that's difficult, they go on and they do these things that's not pleasing in the eyes of God because they're taking the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ as hostage and they make it look like the grace and mercy is their pimp mm -hmm. and is their prostitute. So in, in, in that term, is if you are a Christian and you said, on Christ the solid rock I stand, that means if the wind is coming from both directions, you as a Christian have to know that Christ is the rock not, not, yeah. not the natural rock that is outside, the solid rock, which is Christ. Because as a Christian, I've been a Christian since I've been baptized since I was 13 and I'm 60. Wow. Nobody believe me that that's my age. People ask me every day. I get even sad. I get medical doctors. <laughs> medical doctor when doctor looked at me and said natalie vassal you have an auto, an autoimmune illness and it's going to take your life you're going to be living in oxygen for the rest of your life you're going to end up not walking again you're going to end up with warts all over your face with boils and bumps all over your face you're going to be so swollen you're going to look like a stuffed frog from from the from the steroid that i'm going to be giving you and i looked at the, the, the specialist and this is what i said to him i said i come to you for the diagnosis but now my prognosis is in the hands of jesus yeah when definitely. jesus christ died on the cross he said by his tribe I am here. I'm talking me. I don't care about nobody else. Naculate vassal, you are healed. Yeah. So that's the rock that I'm going to stand on. And I'm telling you now, now, it's nine years. God has healed me from an illness, an autoimmune illness that doctors are amazed that there was no cure. Doctors said there's no cure under the planet. This illness takes your sight, it takes your kidney, it takes your liver, it takes your lungs. When I found out that I had that illness, I never smoked. I never smoked cigarettes in my life. I never do drugs. I never even take a sip of alcohol in my life. So when I found out about this illness, I was saying, oh, when they said your lungs, I said, but I never done none of those things. Why my lungs? They said, it's, nobody knows nothing about this illness, but it affects a lot of black people and people from the Caribbean and, 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 and um, Hispanic. It's called sarcoidosis. People can look it up. Just the name alone scared with people go in and, 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 and um, they, they didn't know what it is. But when I, when I listened to the doctor, and I left his office. He said, but Mrs. Alfie, you got to listen to your, 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 number one, you, there's no medication for it because there's no cure. The only thing you can do is take steroids and you can use oxygen. But I said, listen to me, because doctor gave you guys the knowledge, I will take the prescription for a little while because I'm not mm -hmm. going to be a fool. I'm not going to act like I'm all this self-righteous that don't know that God is the one who gives the doctor the knowledge. They made the prescription for the prescription use it so i said to him i'll take it i was sick for um nine years with that illness nine years oh 
the doctor had stopped me from working. I, I stopped working from making $3,000 a week to only getting $3,000 a month for income from my short-term disability that I paid for in my job. My doctor said, Natalie, you cannot work because you're going back and forth in the hospital, in the hospital, back and forth on the floor. You're going in here in the operating room with the doctor. You cannot work. You will pass out. The doctor had to force me to work, um, to, to, to stop working if he was going to um, write a letter to make me. So I had to stop working. But then I said, listen, I, I went down and I said, God, come on, man, you got to talk. Yeah. Said, you are my solid rock. I believe that I know and believe that uh, you are my solid rock. You are my everything. I said, I'm not perfect, but I try to live a life that's pleasing in your sight. I sit down and talk to him. I said, listen, God, you have brought me to a lot. And you said you will never leave me nor forsake me. Here comes a solid rock again. What am I doing? I'm putting down all my problem on the solid rock. My family and my loved ones never knew I was sick because I never told them. Yes. I was a person that was all like in the range of like 145, 150, 155 the most. I went up to almost 300 pounds because I was, on, I was on steroid injection. I was on steroid because that's the only thing that you could use. My family then was noticing that my, my, my kids were noticing that I was gaining weight. They were grown and married by this. But they never knew why because I never told anybody my business. I'm very private. To get stuff out of me, you're going to have to cut me open. I'm very private. Very, very, very private. I didn't even tell my pastor. I mean my bishop. When I, when I went in my church, my pastor got up and talked that she had sarcoidosis. And that's when I went and spoke to my, my bishop wife, the pastor. She's a pastor, too. And let her know we both have the same illnesses. And, and, and I said, you know what? Dr. Tate told her there's no cure. Hers were worse than me. She was very, very, very ill. But mine was, was because I, I, I think it's because of my faith and because of the diet yes, that I faith, have. Yes, faith, yes. I don't, yeah. I don't eat, I don't, I don't drink, I don't, I don't, you know, I told you, I don't do, I don't eat unhealthy food, I don't eat greasy food, I mm -hmm. don't eat no meat for whatsoever, all my life I never eat meat. What? So I no, I never know diet. that. Oh yes, I never eat meat in my life. When I was a child, if my, if, when the maid, because we are made, when they cook food, they have to cook either saltfish or, or, or um, cabbage or, or something something to do with seafood. I never eat meat. It always make me, it sick my stomach. I used to throw up. I never eat, I have never eaten nothing white in my whole entire life oh. in this world. I refuse all white food. Never like it. It sick my stomach. Never eat white bread, white rice, nothing. White flour dumping, nothing. They have to put cornmeal and it after a ton of cornmeal. I don't eat nothing like all my life. It was bad. I think God was leading me up. To, it, it was leading me up to what was, to, uh, you know, what to take place in my life. And I remember when, you know, I take, I take like fifteen vitamins. And I remember when the doctor looked at me and he said to me, "You might also end up in the nursing home because you're going to get to a point that you're going to have to be in a big lead of oxygen." And then I had to go, I had to speak to the one who told me by his stripe that I'm healed. Yes. And that says um, in Psalms, when he said in Psalms 18, the, when he himself, the solid rock, is my fortress and he's my deliverer. I told him those three things. And then he said to me, Natalie, continue taking the medication. You know, you use the medication to strengthen your body. Strengthen your body with the medication, but I will see you through. Nine years I was sick, but God was trying to humble me. He was trying to bring me in a place because I was so angry at God. He wanted to humble me yeah. so I could see him in my healing. And he put me and he humbled me. And he humbled me and he humbled me. Yeah. People used to see me and said, why are you so, why are you so always happy when when when, when you, you can tell that you're going through a lot with this illness in my church people used to say that and i used to say the rock the rock they said netflix i can't believe you're still saying that after you yes said, the, the rock. rock yeah yeah and I remember one day I went to the doctor. I used to go to the doctor to do x-ray. I mean, a CT scan on my chest every year because it's, it goes in your lungs. And I remember when the doctor told me that I had to come in for, for a PFT, which is a breathing test, and he wants me to do a CT scan. I, I, I left through the door the morning and I'm driving, and I, I, I knew somebody was in my car with me. And he said, Nakale, this is the day. 
and I heard the voice like I'm talking to you right now. I said, this is the day in Accolade. And I'm looking around, I almost scratched. I said, what the heck was that? I went and I did the, the CAT scan and then I went and I do the PFT. In three days, my doctor called me and he said, Natalie, you need to come into my office right now. Amen. I wasn't scared. I said, what is it? I said, he said, you got to come in. I went into the office and I sat down to my doctor and he came in and he said, I'm not supposed to cry because you know, you're a nurse and you know, as a doctor, we have to be professional, yes. but I'm going to cry. He said, I'm going to cry. It's a natural disaster. If I was not a Christian, you would let me give my heart to the Lord. You would let me serve God because every time you come in this office, you say God is going to take care of your problem. And I'm sitting here telling you today that Naclet, your cats can show that it didn't even look like you had sarcoidosis. Your Amen. PFT, your lungs is stronger than a newborn baby. Amen. It's Naclet. It is gone. I you said, are no, 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 it is not gone. I am healed. Amen. I said, I am healed. I said, I told you that. And I left out of that office. I was in my car. I was rejoicing all the way home. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me when I gone up the stairs, I said, God, I've gained over almost 300 pounds, one pound less. He said, naturally, I'm going to miraculously let the weight fall off of you. The weight is going to fall off of you like a butter melting. Amen. And the weight fell off of me like butter melting by the grace of God. So when I tell you on Christ the solid rock I stand, yes. all other ground is sinking sand. I stand on that rock. Nobody can take me off of that rock. One and anybody who's listening on this life, they are listening, man. You're going through, if you're going through any illness, any sickness, yes, right yes. now, I command you, I demand the sickness Amen. to be healed. You just have to believe it is not me. Don't listen to my voice, Amen. listen and say, God, you said it by a stripe. I am healed. healed, and by the grace and the mercy of my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, I ignite the healing, healing power of the Lord Jesus. Whatever sickness you're going through, I command it to be removed by the blood of Jesus. I Amen. command you to be healed by the power of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I command you to be free from bondage, to be free from poverty. Amen. To be free from anything that's holding you back, to be free from any relationship that you are in that's abusive, to be free from sexual and sexual Amen. to be free from any, 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 any demonic forces, to be free from any generation and secular and sustainable curses, to be free from every evil altar that was done to you by your family members, to be free from poverty, to be free from sickness and diseases, that's plague in your body. Amen. Remember, you go to the doctor for the diagnosis so you can bring it to Jesus for the prognosis. Stand on that solid rock. And if you don't believe, say you met a woman, not kill it all over the internet. Then boom, a couple years again, I came back again. Another illness again. I went to the doctor. I said the same thing. This is a different doctor. I said, God, here I am again. I laid on that table. The doctor said, I'm going to do this and do that. God said, don't let them give you anesthesia. I want you to feel the pain because I want you to remember what I brought you from. Amen. And I stayed there. And I, the doctor said, Nicholas, I, I don't want to do this. I'm worried or in pain. But the God that I serve, the solid rock that I stand and took the pain away. Amen. I am telling you people, you have to have the faith. That's crazy. You have to have that bold faith. You have to have the grace to say that people look at you and think you're crazy when you tell them the solid rock is Christ. So tomorrow, I'm praying, giving the, I am an ordained minister and a prophet in my church. Definitely. For 30 years, 30 years, I have touched people and they have healed. I have touched people that, that, that's got HIV and AIDS and God has healed them through my touch. I have touched people that's been paralyzed in wheelchair for ages and they got up and walked. I have touched babies wow. that had, had lungs after lungs and God healed them through my, because that's the gift. No, this is why I tell people, do not mess with Naculate. You don't know Naculate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Naculate is a woman of God. When Naculate pray, God moves. God answers. God the solid rock. Yes. The solid rock. 
and that's what solid rock this is why i tell you honey anything anything any sickness yes i'm not praying i'm praying for everybody yes. any illness that you have on the, just say god i didn't know this but i hear nakala zasa talk of who you are and nakala zasa said to read psalms 18 and go from there and find out who the solid rock is and use that as your master and your healing and say god you said the solid rock which is christ jesus and watch God heal you, but you got to be real about it. But you got to go also and you got to repent. Before God, you got to repent of anything that you have done. You got to repent and ask God to forgive you. And you got to call out the stuff that you have done. You already know. Don't let nobody tell you that God pay you according to your works. It's a lie from the pit of hell. If God pay us according to our works, there would be no need for Jesus Christ. God mm -hmm. pay God pays according to our love that we have for his son, Jesus Christ, and love for others. That's it. Nothing else. Amen. Nothing else. Not the works that you do. You could feed a million people. That's not what you're going into heaven for. You could feed a million person and your heart is wicked and evil and don't love Christ and you go straight to hell. You have to love Christ and you got to love people. Faith, faith. Wow, you not to let that they're that asking rock. you to pray for them. Everybody reasoning with chin said it's a good thing she buck up on this life tonight. Everybody saying well, hallelujah. right now. Anybody right now who is on this life that needs prayer, whatever prayer, whatever you need, do not take me. To, even if you dislike me, which I don't care, just remove me. Don't see me at all. Don't see me. Because it's not going to be me. It's not me. It's Christ. Don't see me. But the word that's going to be coming out of my mouth, I'm caught asking God from the throne room of heaven to ignite it. Don't see me. And if you know you're really not going to see me, do not participate in it. If you know you have any odds against me and you yes, dislike me, yes. because I know a lot of people on social media don't like me, it is go. Don't say the prayer and do not participate in it. If a word that's going to be coming to anybody who truly, truly need deliverance, whatever it is that's going on in your life, just be you call it out to yourself you don't have to call it out in the life it's between you and god don't let nobody tell you you have to call out what's going on it's between you and god because ain't nobody can bring you into heaven but god no mother father pastor no amen body. amen because sometimes we have to shut our mouth because people will use our own business and curse us talk truth so right now in the name of my lord and savior jesus christ i must first of all give reverence to my lord and savior jesus christ i must first say lord i repent of every sin that ever committed in your sight past present and future sins since i can recall and since i cannot recall i repent of all my sins and ask you for your forgiveness and i ask lord jesus that you will take control of this by holy spirit ignite what is in me tell me when to speak and tell me when to shut up tell me when to stay still but you speak through me my lord and savior jesus Christ, to everyone that receiving you, Lord Jesus, through me, Lord Jesus, you are your mouthpiece, but you will give me the words, and anyone that is in need of healing, deliverance, you, Lord, are the healer, the deliverer, and you are the demon slayer, the dragon slayer, and the yoke breaker. So, Lord Jesus, I come boldly before you. In the name of Jesus, as I pray for every single person under the voice, under the sound of my voice. Father God, whatever they're going through, Father God, in the name of Jesus, whatever sickness, whatever ailment, whatever bondage, whatever it is that's going on in your life, Father God. Father God, I ask you to come, tr come through for them. I ask that you ignite everything in your body, Father God, that's causing it. Ignite, ignite your power and your might. Ignite it, Lord Jesus. Jesus. And I ask, Father God, that you dismantle and destroy anything that's holding them back. Father God, I pray the Holy Ghost fire, because it's with Holy Ghost fire that things will burn up. I ask Holy Ghost fire to burn and dismantle and destroy the spirit of generation and sexual and the descent of curses and the yoke of bondage, the sickness, spirit of uh, sexual sin, the spirit of sexual bondage. Father God, the sickness, the spirit of poverty, the spirit of sickness and diseases, the spirit of ailment, the spirit of poverty, the spirit of setback, the spirit of setup, the spirit of demonic and satanic forces, the spirit of wickedness and evilness in higher no places. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that you burn this man, can destroy it with Holy Ghost fire and send it back to the sender, that they will not come to fulfillment, formation, or fruition. No more shall it return. And Father God, I pray that you bring healing, deliverance to them from the corner of their head to the sole of their feet. Anyone that's sick, Father God, in your body, whatever sickness it is, cancer, leukemia, AIDS, HIV, cervical cancer, high blood pressure. 
pressure and cholesterol, diabetes, pre-diabetes, premature death from sickness and diseases, cardiac arrest, heart attack, and obesity, greediness, jealousy, envy, bad mind, voodoo, witchcraft, cobia, black magic, and your spirit, I dismantle and destroy it with the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus in every room, in their home, every, every, every ear in their home. To cleanse it and wash it clean with the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over them to cleanse them and wash them from the corner of their head to the sole of their feet, their inside out. I plead the blood of Jesus to uproot and dismantle and destroy everything that is holding them bondage, holding them hostage in their own body, in their own home, in their finances. I ask Father God that you do a supernatural, miraculous financial healing, financial blessing, supernatural total death cancellation, supernatural financial restoration, supernatural deliverance. Anybody that's having any sickness in their eyes right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask of you to put your hands on your eyes. Anybody Amen. that's having any problem with any sickness in the eyes, God is showing me people with sickness in the eyes. Your eyes are giving you problem. Touch your eyes and just ask the Lord for healing, 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 healing. In the name of Jesus, healing, healing, healing. God mm-hmm. told blind by the mess to go pit and spit in the thing and go in the, in the muddy river and he was healed. So in the mighty name of Jesus, healing, healing, healing in the lungs, in the heart, the kidneys, the liver, the spirit, amen, the, amen. the pathways, the prostate, the vagina, the uterus, the womb, the cervix, the testicle, the scrotum, the rectum, the bowel, the foot, the toes, mouth, the brain, the heart, the lungs, the tongue, the ears, the nose, the skin, the fingers. I ask the dear Lord Jesus to bring us to a supernatural cat scan, a supernatural MRI from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. And I ask Lord Jesus that you heal them, heal them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Whoever is suffering from any inflammation in their foot, inflammation in their foot, swelling foot, I pray Lord Jesus that you reduce it to the mm-hmm. normal level. Any extended thing in their stomach, any gout, any hernia, I plead the blood, any prostate cancer. Amen. I ask of the Lord Jesus that you bring healing and deliverance to them. Diabetes, pre-diabetes, the gluttony of spirit. Mm-hmm. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you cleanse them from the corner of their heads to the sole of their feet. I ask you, Father God, that you bless them in their sleep tonight. I ask you, Father God, that when the devil shows his wicked head, that you will dismantle and destroy him and send him back to the pit of hell where he came from. That whatever he planned, every seen and unseen dangers, every evil demise, every evil altar, every evil assignment, every evil command, every evil setup, every evil setback, every evil trap, every evil early, every evil intent, every evil spoken word, every demonic force, every satanic force. I dismantle and destroy it with only go fire and I send it back to the sender and by your stripes Lord Jesus they're healed they're delivered they're set free to the blood of Jesus and who the Lord set free in is free indeed. indeed and right now Lord Jesus free them free them free them free them healing healing the in the name of Jesus and I pray that they receive their healing and not looking for me for their healing but my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I give you all the glory, I give you all the praise, and I give you all the honor, Lord Jesus, for who you are and for what you have done. And right now, Lord Jesus, I pray, I cleanse myself with the blood of Jesus from the corner of my head to the sole of my feet, my inside out from everything that I prayed against, that nothing will attach themselves to me and come to formation, fulfillment, or completion, that nothing that I prayed against will remain in my home. I cleanse my body, my home, from everything that I prayed against, and nothing will no mean harm me through the blood of Jesus. And by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we're all healed, we're delivered, we're set free, we're protected. Through the blood of Jesus, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody say amen. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. You must say amen. Amen. And amen. Go with God, says he always with you. Always remember that. God don't give up on that. God don't give up give up on us. We give up on God. And don't say you're waiting on God. God is waiting on us. Not say you're waiting on him. He is waiting on us. So I hope you receive this prayer and I hope you are blessed and have a wonderful, restful night's sleep. You pray for me while I pray for you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good night, one and all.